concept of lifelong learning has become one of the most widely discussed concepts in the field of adult education. In 1996, the Education Ministers of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, concluded that lifelong learning for all was a necessary response to the complex demands of everyday life and work and called on member countries to develop innovative lifelong learning policies in response to these challenges. As a result, lifelong learning has gained momentum as a focus of Canadian and international policy discussions aimed at fostering economic and social well-being. Lifelong learning implies that individuals should continue to learn throughout their lives, whether it be in formal settings such as a school, non-formal settings such as a community or cultural centre, or in informal settings such as the home. There is an increasing emphasis on the need to recognize the full range of an individual's knowledge, skills, and competencies in order to meet the demands of the rapidly changing global knowledge-based economy. This video will provide an overview of formal adult education, which is often the most visible and recognized form of adult education. During this video, please reflect on the following analysis questions. How is formal education defined? What are the main characteristics of formal adult education? What are some examples and settings of formal adult education? And who is responsible for formal adult education in Canada? A widely cited definition of formal education is offered by Coombs and Ahmed, who define formal education as the highly institutionalized, chronologically graded, and hierarchically structured education system spanning lower primary school and the upper reaches of the university. Formal education typically takes place in an organized manner often following a specified curriculum or program. Formal educational institutions are usually recognized by the government as being accredited, such as colleges and universities, and learning is often led by experts and trained professionals. In formal education, learning is recorded and grades or credit are granted, and this form of education is traditionally held in high regard, valued, and considered credible. ERA presents five characteristics of formal adult education. The first one is a prescribed learning framework. Formal adult education is typically limited to a specific period or stage. It is provided according to certain rules and regulations, and it is in the form of planned and guided instruction. The second characteristic is an organized learning event or package. Formal adult education is typically organized and structured. From the learner's standpoint, it is always intentional, as the learner's explicit objective is to gain knowledge, skills, or competencies. It also typically takes place in an education or training institution. The third characteristic is the presence of a designated teacher or trainer. In formal adult education, the teachers are usually trained as professionals in some way, and the teacher has the authority to direct designated learners to learn a curriculum from a pre-established body of knowledge. The fourth characteristic is the award of a qualification or credit. Formal adult education typically leads to a formally recognized credential, and it is often guided and recognized by an educational institution, professional body, or sanctioned certifying agency. And the final characteristic is the external specification of outcomes. Formal adult education typically has well-defined learning outcomes and curriculum that are determined by the educational institution, the professional body, or the sanctioned certifying agency. Another common characteristic of formal adult education is that the decisions regarding the objectives, so what is to be learned, and the means, how it is to be learned, are made by someone other than the adult learner. Formal adult education can take place in both traditional and non-traditional settings. A traditional setting is any place in which education is the primary or sole function. High school buildings, college classrooms, and trade schools are obvious examples of traditional settings. Non-traditional settings are places where the primary function or use is not educational. The back room of a bank, a storefront, or rooms in an office building that are used for after-hours classes are examples of non-traditional settings. Formal adult education is most closely associated with secondary education and most degree, diploma, and certificate programs offered by colleges and universities. Continuing higher education, vocational and technical schools, literacy programs attached to public schools, and government training programs are also examples. Formal adult education also refers to various short-term education and training activities that lead to diverse types of certificates. Other adult education programs from skilled trades to the military also fall into this category. Formal adult education is most often supported by public funds and tends to be the most visible in industrialized nations. In Canada, there is no federal department of education and no integrated national system of formal education. Canada's Constitution Act of 1867 granted responsibility for education to provinces, and similar responsibilities are dedicated to the territories by the federal government. 
Within each province and territory, departments or ministries of education are responsible for the organization, delivery, and assessment of education at the elementary and secondary levels, for technical and vocational education, and for post-secondary education. Some jurisdictions have separate departments or ministries, one having responsibility for elementary and secondary education, and another for post-secondary education and adult skills training. Please reflect on the following synthesis questions. What are the unique characteristics of formal adult education? Why is formal adult education traditionally held in high regard, valued, and considered credible? How does formal adult education contribute to the goal of lifelong learning? And what is your experience with formal adult education? And how does it compare to other learning experiences you have encountered?